Happy belated New Year, everyone. Welcome to Erratic Symposium, the podcast with the man with a shitty mic, Jordan, and his other host, Kodo. I'm yeah. Kodo. So, yes. So, my good friend, Happy New Year, my good friend. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Even, yeah, yeah, I mean, even though it's like a, a week after the exactly New Year. Exactly a week. You know, in exactly. January 7th. Oh, yeah, it is exactly a week. Holy shit. Yeah. Hmm. But it's the thought that counts, my friend. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year too. <laughs> Do you have so, any uh, uh, New Year resolutions res- or yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask that New Year resolution things. Uh, I'm not a subscriber to the idea of New Year resolutions. I really just live life. But Yeah, I. me too. I, yep. Since last year, I stopped doing New Year and care about celebrating with fireworks. <laughs> so what? Nothing happened this uh, to you this New Year's? Uh, nothing much actually. Yeah, same as me. Yeah, but I want has... <laughs> Yep. Yeah, but I do have stuff to talk about. Oh, nice. So okay. what is it that you wish to speak of, my good friend? Let me ask you a question. Do you think? Fire away. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you do think, think you can write reviews? Do you think you yourself you can write a review? I'm under the impression that yes, I can. Okay. However, whether or not they are good reviews or bad reviews is a different question altogether. I don't know about that. Do you have... Have you write review before? Have you written not review technic- before? Not, not technically, but when it comes to like... Uh, you know I read fan fiction, yes? I've come to believe other people yeah. listen. Yeah, re- you read fan fiction. That I, yeah. Yes. I'm going to believe other people who are listening and have been listening. Oh, if they actually do know that I listen or uh, follow regularly. I don't, come on, mother, I will come to believe someone does. Like one, that one guy who's like our first fan for some reason. Like he, he listens to us and he goes, these people, these virgins resonate with me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. so, okay. So it, you know, I read fan fiction. Yes. Okay. Of mm-hmm. course, in the in the website I go to, which is called fanfiction.net, which is like the biggest fucking place for fanfiction, I guess. Yeah. There is no such thing as a comment system, but there is a review sort of system. So do you review bomb? To what the fuck? No. <laughs> no. When I Okay. I, okay then. Re- I do review, but it's very rare that I do, if only because of the fact that there are times when certain, when I can't really word out my review like that properly because you know I usually review on the moment. I rather, when in truth, I'm much better at writing rather deep reviews if I were to just step outside and think about it. Something like that. I have so yes, I have reviewed, but I guess the ones that I have put up have not been very deep and have not been very well in the standard of other reviewers, good. That's what I can say. Okay, I see. So, yeah, yeah, I ask these questions because I Mm -hmm. know this. I am confident in writing a video game review. But I... Yes, I'm confident. I think I can write one. If I play it and explore what it has, what the game has offered. Uh, But I don't think I can write a review of uh, anything that's passive, a passive medium. That includes movies, TVs, uh, comics, and things. And why would you say that? What 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 do you think you? Why why would you say that? Because last year, hold on first. Something. Okay. okay. I found something. Okay. Uh, because last last year I've been trying to write some reviews of anime I watch. I okay. cannot. Write a whole lot. Like it's not enough. I don't have enough material to write a, a whole article of the review of oh, the anime okay. I want to watch. Well, in that case, my question to you then is: What do you focus on when you are writing these reviews? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> okay, if that I is wanna... a good question because <laughs> if... <laughs> no, you okay. go first. You go first. If I want to review this. The latest show that I really like, which I say I will give it a nine. Okay. If I want to focus. I would say 
why I like it so much. Hmm. But okay, a okay. Very personal opinion based uh, review. Yes. It's very personal. I say why I like it so much, and I'll be totally writing and aware that not everyone are totally going to be into this kind of show. Okay. This kind of show. So hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm going to write. If I want to write that a review of that show, I don't know how to write it in a way that is really convincing. I very convinced people why. I like this so much, and I it, can give you a nine it because, out of ten. Okay. Is it is it because you are not really able to gather evidence or something like that? Something to to prop up why you have the score that you are giving. Is that the problem, or it is it some sort saying, of like? Or is it okay? Sorry. Uh, you go on first. Or or is it some something to do with maybe the language you're putting into the review? Is there certain words that you're not really putting out there that could help you with your argument or something like that? I mean, I mean, language is very important in trying to like persuade people. I see. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think it's that. It's just I don't know how to write. I don't know how to write it. I don't know how to describe the showing a way that it's oh, unique okay. and. So much so that is almost a tank. I just Very you want to say why I like okay. it now. I just say it's an epi- episodic, a very episodic show with interesting okay. characters and other interesting scenarios. And they are sometimes, sometimes the episode can be a miss, but mostly they are hit and they are long. And they can basically okay. run forever, but they the inter- the episodes are good, and I enjoy the episode. I enjoy the characters, and that's mm-hmm. why I can give it a nine. If I sit right, if I write something like this, even if I manage to, I stretch it into an mm-hmm. article. I don't think yeah. it says anything interesting about this show. Oh, based from what I have heard from what you have said. Yeah. Yes, what you have said is basically just the most cookie cutter of reviews. You can say that to any show, honestly, any show that you like. Like, oh, this show has interesting characters. It has interesting scenarios. Sometimes they they are miss, but most of the time they are hit. There's nothing that conveys what you see is unique about this show we are talking about. It is very basic, cliche language. In a and sense. I cannot say, and I just. Don't know how to write a review about this show, even though I actually really like it. Well, in that case, you might as well just look for other. Look, just read other reviews. Look at what they focus on. Look at how they structure their arguments as to why the show is so great or so bad. It's all about. By this point, I think it's all just all about exposure. You need to expose yourself to like better, to like more people who do reviews and stuff like that. But that's all I can say. Hmm. Okay, yeah. well, I'm gonna talk about that, like read the other reviews, <laughs> because I just don't wanna get an like, influence. How should I say? Not influence. That may be a bit hard, my friend, because I don't know if influence is the right word. It's just like if I see some other opinions, maybe my own opinion is not the original one anymore because it's get it's being influenced by the others. Maybe well, I mean, my original you... opinion is not one. It's not maybe okay. maybe my current opinion is not okay. the original one I have anymore. You know that's why I didn't read other well, reviews. Opinions. Well, I mean, opinions change, my friend. I don't th- I think it's that special that you need to have an opinion that never changes. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Well, where did you go? Did you even hear what I just said? Yes, okay? yes, yes. You say the the opinion <laughs> opinion can always change. Yeah, so I sh- so I'm not really understanding as to why you would, in a sense, oh, what is that word? I don't want to say glorify your opinion. Yeah, let's let's go with that. Glorify. I don't really understand why you glorify your opinion. Like in a sense that you don't want anything else corrupting it. In a sense, I'm putting my fingers up. Corrupt. Corrupt. Well, corrupting. I'm not sure. Is that a right corrupting. word? It I just... don't think so. That is a, it's a. That's a very hyperbolic word in this situation. It's very. 
Uh, so, I keep forgetting words these days. Like, there's a word in my head and it just goes away, which is pretty sad. <clears throat> but in any I... case, yeah. Yeah, I get, yeah. I get what you, I get what you're trying to say. And. Yeah, I say. Well, I don't have anything to say. I think I will just try to see other reviews. I mean, it's always a good idea to do that. I mean, I learned, well, I learned well, how to write. Yeah. yeah, okay, you go first. No, I mean, I learned how to write just by reading a lot of stories. The problem is, this is gonna, this may be a bit weird for some people because, of course, fan fiction has such a low bar to it. I've learned how to write pretty good through pretty good fan fiction that I've found, like that I shopped around for. Because at the time, of course, I was a bit of a grandma Nazi in a sense, but my writing skills were fucking shit. So of course I had to look, but of course at the time I loved to read some fan fiction. So I looked around and I found some pretty good ones that had amazing writing styles that conveyed stuff really well, even to this day. Like as I go back to reread old stories that I've read before, they all were written very well. So of course, after reading so much of those kinds of stories, I've come to a point where my writing skills are at the very least at that level, which is, you know, pretty fucking good. So in a sense, yeah, you, sh you should expose yourself. If you expose yourself to really good writers, really good reviewers, your skills can very much go up if you learn something from them, if you learn how they, how they write, how they talk in a sense not really like literally talk but how they talk in written form if you learn that you might be a you might do some pretty good reviews i guess hmm. if you actually want to you know pursue this review business i guess yeah it will help me in the long run because i oh, can yeah. write again i'm confident in my video game writing review okay. uh, video game review but passive medium, not so much. Yeah, I really, I do absolutely love to have the ability to write a passive, a review of passive medium. In that case, I think, hmm, I don't know whether or not this is really good advice because I'm not a reviewer myself. Yeah, I think you should start with a baseline for what you think is a good or a bad uh, show or game. TV, uh, comic book or you know no, I don't really work. I don't really get I don't really understand what you say because I you need, find, you need to find a standard a standard for you that 5 out of 10 story and that, then that, I start... don't really have one but I can say but I can tell you what I like what I really like what I do not uh... like Okay, sure, I guess. I'm not a, again, I'm not a reviewer, but you know, I'd be happy to. But it's, uh, it's, it's definitely good mm -hmm. that if I know more, the more I know about what I like and what I dislike, okay. the more I can find, the more I can write a review of something. Yeah, I mean, if you want to write a re review, it is also a good idea to at the very least be extremely familiar with what you are writing. With, the, with both extremes as well, the extreme of the good and the extreme of the bad. You need to see what the best side and the worst side are, so, just so you can understand what makes it bad and what makes it good. And thus, you can apply that knowledge to your reviewing in that sense. It, is, is that clear? Yeah. I'm, okay. Yeah, that's clear. Yeah, yeah, okay. I have a question to you. Have you experienced this? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. What have is this experience that? you speak of? Have Is you it? seen a review of a something mm -hmm. that you just don't understand why they are written that way? Uh, how, okay, how, like example, uh, I've mm -hmm. seen someone. Okay, I've seen someone praise Boiler Evergarden. You know that show, right? Yes, Boiler Evergarden. Yeah. I <laughs> don't really like Boiler Evergarden. I can tell you my problems with it, uh, okay. and I have what I have seen people praise the show. And the reason why they think it's good, I was I thinking, what the fuck? That's why you like it? It's uh, completely opposite. I just don't understand me, why. Can you give me an <laughs> can you give me an example, my friend? 
Okay, example. okay, so okay, there's the one I most I think I can only remember one that he says okay. he says uh, whatever garden has memorable characters as memorable characters memorable uh -huh. I watch it I don't think they are memorable I I couldn't give a damn to any of the characters. Hmm, interesting. He just and he uh, just says Yeah. He just says they are, the characters are memorable and end it at there. Oh well that's not a very good opinion to be, you know. I mean, if I don't know what makes them memorable, I don't really know how to answer this. Yeah, but even even though I say that if you want, if you ask me why I think the characters aren't memorable and why they're terrible, not actually terrible. I won't say they are terrible. I just say I will say they are mediocre because they don't do anything to get me want to be invested to them. Are they now? Mind you, I have not watched Violet Evergarden. Yeah, I know that. But from what I you know what? Let's let's not go there. I don't I don't know whether or not what I'm gonna say is gonna be true or not. So let's not go there. That's gonna be a very dangerous thing to explore. In any case, remember when you said you were finding it very hard to resonate with certain characters to connect with them, like a, yeah. a few episodes back, I guess. Yes. We yes. could assume, first and foremost, we could we could assume that the person writing this review that you don't like resonates with the characters. That in a way that you don't. It's his personal opinion. The problem is he doesn't say his personal opinion, so we have a fucking clue what's happening, which is already pretty fucking shit. Or secondly, you could we could just also assume that you just don't like the kinds of characters or characterization Violet Evergarden puts up. And other people do. Because again, it all comes down to personal opinion. A reviewer cannot be objective. A reviewer is always subjective. That is my belief. Yes, that is very. That's a very neutral point of view. It's actually a pretty good point of view. Okay, understand it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but and... and I don't know what to say. I forgot. Oh, I can shit. say this is gonna be. I a... can say okay. I, I can say that. Yeah, sure. I mm -hmm. I do admit I'm not a fan of Tear Joker. Okay, if the I melodrama want, stuff? Yeah. I don't like it when something wants to make someone cry. I fucking okay. hate it. If you fail okay. if you fail hard on making me cry, I will I will be extra hard against you. I'll be extra hard against the work if you fail to make me cry. And in I that case that is what the Evergarden. I don't know. I don't really like your way of talking about this kind of stuff. I rather if it's, there's if it's there's biased, so I admit it's, I admit it's biased. Yes. It's a biased way of yeah, looking at it. I mean everyone is biased. But it's so annoying. I, I understand. But it's really <laughs> annoying when something wants to make someone cry. And they it just gives me the feel that they are pretending to get people to sympathize with the work. Okay. But I would rather ask you this. Does it at least incite some emotion from you? Something like that. An emotion. What do you mean? A bit of... Because if a tearjerker doesn't work, there yeah. should at the very least still be some sort of an effect. It doesn't effect. have to be you crying. It just has to be you being a bit sad, being a bit down. No, I don't feel from... that. Are I you don't serious? feel that when I watch what the whatever fuck is garden. Wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, okay. okay you, even okay, though so something... Have... No, stop, even... stop, stop right there. Okay, so you, go happen... you go first. You go first. So it doesn't happen... That... When you watch Violet Evergarden, does it happen if when you watch other tear jerkers? The idea that even though it doesn't put you to tears, it at the very least makes you feel like something. Okay, even though it's sad, even though it's sad, what does what does it do? It doesn't do anything when it's sad. We all know really? everything, every tear jerker, every tear jerker is sad. But I don't every care. Supposed to be. Are I you don't fucking care. serious? How disconnected can you be from the stuff you watch? Jesus Christ. Try, I have a better advice. Try to make a good character or a good scenario that can make me care. 
Yes, that is a good that is a good idea. Make a good character. Make a good scenario. Make something that, in that you case, care about. In that case, then, spoiler ever got a fail yeah. then, because I don't cry. Oh, I don't feel sad, or I don't like well, want to cry. It doesn't make me want to shed a tear. Well then, well, then you could make it a point where because of the fact that all these the characters don't work, the scenario maybe doesn't work. You could, if you were to be writing a review of this, you could write that and then lead to the point that because it's a tearjerker and because of the fact that those things did not work, it fails as a melodrama tearjerking story. Okay, now, now, like now there comes the that this comes problem. Why do I think it doesn't work? I cannot explain this. Well, you could I just explain speaking. the characters, like why the characters don't work. The fact that maybe, oh, because the characters don't work, you don't care enough of the fact that it is a tearjerker. You don't care about the events that cause it to be a tearjerker because you don't care about the characters or you don't care about what's happening. You could write that. That is how you argue. You look at other things that may compound the idea that it fails as what it's supposed to be. You don't look at a, how should I say? You don't look at an entire movie and just say the movie sucks shit. You have to look at every component of the movie and then argue, this is why the movie does not work for me because of the characters, the scenario. Maybe maybe even if you want to go technical, maybe even how the entire thing is framed, maybe the colors, maybe all, all that kind of stuff, basically. I mean, I don't I'm literally just saying this because I don't really understand why you would still have a problem with how you argue that it's not a good tearjerker. But honestly, you because could just I cannot, I because I really what? cannot describe why it's a terrible tearjerker. I can just I can only and I can only say the characters. I cannot connect to the characters. I cannot relate to the characters, and that is why I find it as a bad, a bad and boring tearjerker. That's only why I can write. I can only write why, exactly why they are terrible, why the characters are boring. I cannot exactly write that. I cannot go into the details on that. That's very interesting. Again, I, I haven't watched Violet Evergarden, so I can't really help you in that. That, by the sounds of it, you have to at the very least think about it a little more. So I can't really help you with that. So, uh, yeah. But then, but then again, uh, it is kind of off topic, but it's still about whatever garden. It has another problem that I mm -hmm. very, I'm very sure that I have a big problem with it, and I can describe it in details on why mm -hmm. I really, I really don't like it. You could, I mean, remember, you could always write a first draft and then come back to it again and again yeah, and again. No, 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 no. I try, I try writing Not draft, exactly. like uh, You're not a drafting the kind of guy. No. I do write draft, but I, I, I'm saying I've written draft before on shows okay. I've watched in the past and oh, tried to okay. write a review out of it, and it doesn't really work. It doesn't work. Oh. It doesn't go much. Go anywhere. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. But right now, right now, since I'm in, I have Discord, I'm in multiple Discord servers. Whenever I play something or watch something, I will just write a long paragraph describing my experience with that particular things, including passive oh, mediums. Oh, okay. On Discord servers, no, public Discord servers. People have a tendency to do that, and I also have a tendency to do that. Oh, I don't wow. know why. That's pretty interesting. It's very cool, actually. Yeah. It's kind of a normal thing. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Nice to see, and okay. then some, suddenly someone just posts a very long paragraph, and they play oh, wow. something. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, I think I don't have anything to yeah. add more. more. Oh, so, is, that, is that all from you? <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty much done. I learned, I do learn a few things about reviewing. I think I do about reviewing from you, oh, which is good oh, for okay. me. I do pay hey. a bit. Do See, you I'm such a great friend. Now, where's the payment? Pay? Yeah. Where's the money? I oh, screw you. you, dude. No, you gotta pay. No. Oh, fuck off. No, no I'm not I'm giving you any money. Parent. 
I'm getting my fucking. Let me try in our punk partnership right here and there. This will be the last episode. Hey, you see, hey, hey, <laughs> I have a lawyer, motherfucker. I'm gonna get that money one way or two others. Hey, <laughs> no, let's anyway. Not, let's yeah, it's a joke. Anyway, yes, yes, it you, was a joke. nothing happens. Oh, to actually, you recently? No, no, actually one thing happened, but it's the most boring piece of shit anyone has ever heard. What is it? I finally got to make an account in Maiden of the Kaleidoscope. The for the to the Western Toho Forum. Well, how did you got, how how do you make it? No, it's very simple. It's literally the same. The problem was during like a few weeks back when I first found it. The registration was closed yeah. for a long time. And I was under the impression that maybe it had been closed for like years now or some shit like that. No, it just closes and opens because, of course, the forum, the mor moderators of the forum are afraid of people just spamming like accounts and shit. And why is it but open again? I think it's open because one guy, I, I saw like this thread, one guy noted like, oh, why is it closed and shit like that? So he was like, oh, so there was a, mod I guess a moderator who came and went, oh, okay, we're just going to open it again. So I was like, oh shit, I okay. might as well have an account. So you can RP so now. now. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the opportunity because I don't want to just suddenly barge into any of the older RPs. And there, there was a new one, but I was late for that shit. And there's also a problem that I have absolutely no idea what time zone the forums is using. Oh, good luck because with that. Good luck with me. that. No, because most of the RPs are late, are from what I can see, late at night. Exactly. Some people come, some people exactly. come at around 9 p.m. and shit. And I'm just going, 9 p.m. Southeast Asian time? Like Singapore time or shit like that? Or is, are we talking about time in the U.S.? And advice for you, advice for you, my yeah. friend. If you yes. try to take part in activities, the online activities, uh -huh. there's yes. not in our countries. You better mm -hmm. stay up late or oh, wake up very sake. early in the morning. Like last, like last week, Ish. I watch, I watch, uh, and I go. I went to a group watch with the okay. folks in Digibro Discord. Do you yeah. know how? Sh when should I wake up? What two, three, six a.m. And six I already it's not that fucking bad. Hold on, I woke I... up at six today and I felt fine. You know, I usually oh, wake up at eight or nine. It's not That's six a.m. is for six a.m. is for the primary students who are going to school. Yeah, maybe I went, I am still a primary student by heart then because I always wake up wake up at like six seven. Well, that's good for you. Yeah, but I'm a healthy boy. <laughs> but it's just very. It's not, I'm not used to it. It's too early. And I only received this news that they announced that they're going to do to the mm -hmm. group watch when it's 12 in the morning at my side. Ooh. So I only have six hours left. And six hours of sleep is not enough for me. Ouch. So I don't know what to do. And I was thinking, okay, fine. I should try gamble. I tried to gamble <laughs> sleeping, but. This time I'm not going to sleep on the on the bed on bed. I'm going to sit on the I'm going to sleep on the floor. I I try to sleep as I'm com I try to sleep in an as uncomfortable position as possible and and set multiple why alarm you, clock. Why would you fucking torture yourself like this? You might as well have Just a so bed I can and then set multiple fucking alarms. No, it doesn't because Jesus I tried it and Christ. it doesn't work. I tried it doesn't work. So I try fuck? to sleep on a, and sleep in. A, and I'm comfortable position. So I can wake up. And when I wake oh, up, man. it's 5 a.m. in the morning. I set three alarm clock. And when I wake up, it's 5 a.m. in the morning. And I managed to participate in the group watch. Oh, that's pretty cool. And yeah, when I finish it, I just go back to sleep. And when I wake up, it's 1 in the <laughs> afternoon. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, but what this is not fuck? my first time. Uh, every time there's a group watch in whatever Discord server, I have to yeah. wake up very early, or oh, wow. I have to hold out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So cool. good luck for your RP. Mm. Good luck to your <laughs> RP. Jesus. Yep. Good luck to fucking me. In any case, ever at a certain point, I actually started thinking to myself, 
How would I make an RP? Can I make an RP? How hard is it gonna be making an RP? I have no experience in RP. Yeah, you have no experience. No, I don't so know. I, I, I can't can, yeah. can say anything. I can, I can <laughs> offer any advice. Or say anything no, about it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Wait, hold on. Have yeah? you played RP in online games? Like, I heard that GTA Online has RP and Gary's Mod has RP. No, I have never played an actual RP. I ever. See. In any medium whatsoever. I see. Now, but however, of course, I when I was thinking of that RP, that maybe one day if I have the fucking resources and the time, I could make. I was thinking to myself, what would you know? What would be the best scenario, especially in a Toho forum? So I played around with ideas, and I came to this idea that oh, I have oh, an you know, idea. Oh the, shit! What is it? The Cutting University yes. is transported to Gensokyo. You fuck off! No. <laughs> the no, entire it university. Te- it technically could work if, for some reason, everyone was super into it. Like everyone from the university, and they all played along. That would have been fucking hilarious. What the? F- the problem oh. is nobody would be would be that involved. Oh, hold on, hold on. I was. Just... Yeah, I would just say something. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, two years ago, like two years ago yes. is the the foundations. I when I. I have to participate in the I participate in the what is it again? Oh okay. Should we call yeah. you know the one for to welcome uh, the new students, the event. Shit, what was it again? How did I, for, how did I forget? Yeah, I, forget. Oh, I don't shit. remember. It I don't just, remember. Anyway, well. it just oh. the the kind of events that that encourage the new students to join, so they can oh. learn they can spend the week to learn more about the university. And orientation or something? Orientation, yes. Orientations. Oh, oh orientation. The, that, the orientation that I joined, which is two years ago, I they have a game. They have a game about transporting that the organizers they the organizers they pretend that the entire university is transported to some fantasy world. And wait, so or- it's basically an isekai. Yes, it's an isekai. Oh fuck no! What and is then this? we the the orientation students, all of all of the students, they are divided into groups, and they have to play this play the isekai games, and we have to the this groups is... they have to run around the university and collect collect stuff, collect clues pieces, and then sounds, so they have to uh, collect pieces, and they have to well they have to figure out something like they will show they show us a video okay. that shows. Some dungeon and dragons teams, they they go on a dungeon raid and then they stole some treasures. But turns but mm-hmm. on the second day the treasure is gone and we have to collect the clues and find out which one is the culprit. Ooh, okay, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, it's an isekai. The orientation they did an isekai ish. Oh, wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's a kai ish detective game. Oh wow! So, yeah. uh, so that's actually pretty, that's actually pretty cool. It sounds like a very interesting event to do. Nah, uh, it's not because <laughs> it's that, not what happened. It's well, how should I say? It's the same as every group, every group activity I've been in ever since I'm in the university. So my problem. But this one just, this one just basically has an isekai skin to it. Yeah. In a sense. That's yeah. What you're saying. Oh, yes. That's pretty sad. It's just every my problem with the every group activities, universities, it's like like uh it's like being say rehashed. five people. Like say there okay. are five people in a group and we usually usually we have little to no communications and people are they I mean, all of us do our own things and even if we try to have cooperate, we have no idea how to do it. Oh, no? that's pretty sad. Uh, if I play, if I actually play a multiplayer, an actual multiplayer game, yeah. cooperative one, it has more mm-hmm. cooperative spirit than any of the group activities I've done in the school. I mean, yeah, because in games, you don't have to see the other fucking person. 
We don't have to interact no, with them. No, <laughs> no. That was a joke. It's just that it has more interactivity in games. But usually in the group activities in schools, you see there is no interact, no interactions, and it just oh, wow. very awkward. You don't experience this in your no, course. I wasn't in. I wasn't even in orientation. No, no, it's not just in orientation. It's in, in any, basically in every anything, course, basically. in any course. Yeah, any course in the school. I just cannot. I usually there are little to no interactions. I don't know. The There's group. been quite a lot of interaction from my. From my side, from from my side, there isn't much, and it's oh, very wait, boring. No, I, no, stop right there. I think I do remember there was a uh, for one of my marketing uh, units last semester. We one group. I had one group that only communicated through WhatsApp. We never met until the very last day when we had to do a presentation. Ooh. None of us met. It was for one of the marketing uh, units. I don't know. Uh, what was it? Was it consumer behavior or something like that? Yeah, it should be consumer behavior. Oh, no, no. Uh, I'm not, not, not talking about this kind of direction. It's like, what on do the you spot. mean? I, on, the, on the spot, usually, the activities that involve the activities that's doing on the spot, we have any prior announcement. Like during tutorials, mm -hmm. like during tutorials, and we have to solve these questions. I saw this list of questions, and they will say it requires a group discussion. These kind of activities, they have little to no interaction. I don't think that's and really happened to me, actually. It happens to if me. Only because, no, if only because I'm usually the one that tries to chat people up, and I think that starts the ball rolling, which is a bit weird. And this, and my experience <laughs> to these tutorials are similar to the isekai -ish orientation game. Oh wow! Yeah, and we either just no interactions between the members, or we just sit around and look and wait. Ooh, okay, That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. In any case, can I go back to my? <laughs> can, okay. Can I go back to my R RP sh stupid RP yes, shit? Yes. Yes. That nobody that nobody gives a shit about. I will come to believe. <laughs> so I was because okay. I was playing around with concepts, and I came with one that worked like this. You are a villager from the human village in Gensokyo. You want to be a farmer! Yeah! But of what? course you're fucking shit and stuff like that. No, okay. keep, keep, keep listening. However, you do have ideas. You have an idea that you want to go out of the human village and you want to make connections with the, other, with the yokai of Gensokyo. So okay. you can get their techniques, their farming techniques, and so you can apply it to your future farm and stuff like that. However, of course, you don't have a fucking farm. Come on, give it. I'm, I'm, I'm literally just giving the players like the worst start at first. But there is an event in the next day where everyone from the, everyone, every farmer from the human village is going to show off their stuff, going to show how they grow their crops and shit like that. It's like, a, it's like a farmer's event or something like that. And we start off there. We're supposed to start off there. But everything is going to be rather randomized in terms of how every in terms of how the game starts, because I created a sort of a spreadsheet on like different I, uh, different events on the first day, like oh if you do this you will come you will uh, meet this character and then this character will give you hints on this item or this technique in farming and stuff like that. As I as I played a, along with that idea. Hold on I first. came to the realization. Yes. Hold on first. Pause. Yes. I don't really understand. <laughs> Which part do you not understand? Okay, you say. Are you saying each day we have different, or very randomized, very different scenarios, each day? No. Are you saying on that? this first event, on this farmers event thing, I made a lot of different, uh, if smaller sub events. Okay. That of course the people will have to stumble upon because of course as they're parsing as they're playing around, I the parser, basically the game master, will of course have to decide, oh, what will happen? What is what is my response to their response? Oh, so I was playing okay. around with all these ideas. And at a certain point You make a big okay. chart on the board. In a, you made a big chart on the board. Yeah, technically happens. in that sense, yes. 
So all of these would be random. Some of the events might actually be missed out. So of course I have to like push whatever benefits you have from that event aside for like a future event and stuff like that. But as I played around with the idea, I came to the re realization, why the fuck would anyone play a game about being a farmer? That's hey, boring. Hey, Nintendo Stadio Verde exists and Harvest Moon series exists. No, in written form. Who in would play that? Form? Yeah, well, you have to understand these, this, these RPGs I think are it's possible. written. I think it's very possible. It could be, but who the fuck wants to wait for their crops to grow? Well, that is, again. And think about it. What is. Again, what is what, Harvest think, Moon series X is. <laughs> it's just that. Yes. I think. From, I think, in my humble opinion, people uh, people are willing mm -hmm. to play anything and everything. You know, they are willing to RP anything and everything. Like, who would wanna I, do? Who wanna I, be a delivery man? If I if you ask me to be a delivery man in real life, it's boring. I <laughs> won't do it. But as an RP, I can understand why one why yeah. it would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, to anyone who uh, who listened to that uh, episode, I actually got the name of that uh, RP game wrong. It's not thirty minutes or less. It's thirty minutes or it's free. I actually wrote it down in the description. So yeah, this is a small note. So back to that. The team is or it's free. Okay. Yes. You know, like you know, like when you deliver stuff. Like remember those ideas about pizza delivery. Yeah. Like oh, if I, if we don't deliver in thirty minutes, it's free. That kind of shit. Okay. So uh, back back to the RP. So at first, I I came to the realization people would not want to wait for their crops to grow. Although I could assume that some people would be okay with. Uh, with at the bridge going out and doing other stuff whilst the fucking crops grow. But that would, that would turn this RP game into the longest fucking RP in the world because there technically is no ending. What is the end of it? The end is just you becoming the best farmer in the fucking human village. That's a pretty like intangible goal. I mean, Naruto became, became a Hokage, but... That's a tangible fucking thing. One Piece might as well be... Well, I mean, One Piece is a real thing. I don't know what the fuck Ichigo wanted for in Bleach. But for but for this, being the best farmer... Oh, in some, what they had to say. Thing. What they had to say. Yes. Uh, yes. The most of the serialized, the serialized mangas, usually the writers, in writers themselves, they write, they write their manga with no ending my... They're basically designed to run forever. Which is a terrible fucking idea. That's all I can say. It has... Yes, it's good and bad. Uh, it can run forever, yeah. but... Yeah, if you want to close it up, you... You're basically dead. You don't know how to close it up. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. But, other than that, because I thought I could, this could not be an RP, I instead turned it into a video game. You know, like Harvest Moon and stuff. You know, like what you've been okay. talking about. Toho yeah. Harvest Moon. Wait, does yeah, that ex yeah, even exist? Does that exist? I don't does think, think so. Is the thing you of this kind exist? I have never seen it. I have never heard That's, anyone I'm talk going to about search it. it. I'm going to search it. Okay, you're going to search it. <laughs> but at this point, I don't know whether or not you're going to be interested in like the interesting concepts that I was thinking about. But you're, about you, are you saying I, interesting game ideas? I, th I, I don't know. It's about just ideas that I've never concept. seen. It's just ideas that I've never seen in Harvest Moon or Moon Factory. I actually never played like those games, so I know nothing about them. <gasps> Not even <gasps> Stardew Valley. <gasps> you oh played them goodness. before? Yeah, actually, you what? played them before? Have yes, played? I have oh. played some of the Harvest Moon games. I have played Moon Factory 1, 2, 3, and 4. What about Stardew Only Valley? Finished... Yes, I have nice. Stardew yeah, Valley, okay. but I have never finished it. At a certain okay. point, I just, gave, I just said fuck it and forgot about it. Which is pretty sad. I, I never played them, so I don't. Oh, I don't should, know no, anything about. No, them. you should fucking play Rune Factory. Rune Factory is the best. No, not Rune I'm Factory not One. Rune Factory One sucks shit. Rune Factory Two and Three are fucking amazing. I'm still not interested. Especially in Three. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm serious because uh, it just. I usually look for. I usually look for games myself, and it just. Okay. If, in case if for someone to recommend a game. To me, 
I need to hit a certain mm-hmm. spot. Or when I'm asking for a particular game. Okay. Only then I, it's more likely for me to accept a recommendation. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So I so, I'm under the impression that you do not wish to hear of these ideas, which of course would have the game you comes know, your game concept. No your yeah. Toho Farmer Harvest Moon <laughs> yeah, game your concept. Toho, your Toho Far- Harvest Moon, yes. <laughs> Oh, you can, say, you, you can say you can you can say it because this kind of reminds me of the time back then. I kind of yeah. joined, participated in mm-hmm. a game dev, a game developer team oh, really? that my friend made. I do not remember you telling me of I this. Never, yeah, I never told you before. I told my friend. My friend or not? I told my yes. I told my other friends about it, and thinking back about it, it's it's very. Childish, <laughs> not embarrassing. I say it's very childish. Okay. And it just it seems that at that time, the other people stay are right after all. Okay. Okay. In the huh. context, for context. Okay. Basically, uh, my yeah. back arm I was like seventeen. Okay. Friend, seventeen. Okay. Yeah, back I was seventeen years old. I have a friend. He asked me why whether he I want to. Take uh join his team. That he says he his team is going to make a video game. Okay, he, and he said cool. he's serious. He's serious about it. Very very serious. And I say I'm interested in, to join because making video games together with yeah, friends. I, I guess it is. It does sound pretty fun. And but the problem, the issue is, none of us know how to how to code, and we don't know any Ooh. any shit about. Game developing, and we Ooh, okay. And despite that, we are saying we're going to make a video game. So when, so every anyone in the school when they heard about it, they will say, the guy, my friend, because my friend is the one who proposed it first. Every anyone who heard about it will say my friend is a very childish guy. Okay. And back then I was thinking, back then I don't think he's a childish person. I just say, hey, that's very mm-hmm. interesting. And we never know. We if we have a, we never know until we try. That's the mentality I have at the time. So I still okay. I still support his idea of making a game. No. Mm-hmm. So and now like three uh three years later and thinking back, yeah, we are indeed very childish. We don't know shit about game developing. And we are going to make a game about survival and open world with a very ambitious goals and stuff. Are you childish or just ambitious? I say we are childish at the time because we we don't know anything about game devel- game developing, any game program, game coding and things. And we are and we want to make a open world survival game. You could honestly have just started. Like you know, learning how to do it, but we didn't. Like we just say, he just, I just listen to him, and he has ideas and things. He has story ideas and like the the maps ideas and the lores, lores of the game, and he just and draws okay. it, and even draws it out. He doesn't even have a very like spec a uh, good. Doesn't have a good drawing <laughs> skills. He just draws it out <laughs> with a pencil and say, "We are going to make this, this, and we're going to implement this and stuff." Ooh. And we never really, mm. never really like yeah. use a computer and to start make the assets and things. I say we're oh, very, yeah, very childish. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. And we never speak about. And originally, he say that after SPM. After SPM, we are going to start. He said that after SPM, we are going to really start working on it. But after SPM, it's just all dead. There's no use anymore. Ouch, no use about it anymore. Dead. Yeah. Oh. That's pretty sad, actually. Sounds like it could have been pretty fun. Well, I say I'm not very. I won't say embarrassed about it. I do think he is pretty interesting. You say, even though okay. it's 
childish. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, continue with your game concept. <laughs> your Harvest Moon Toho fan game. game. <laughs> the game concept. <laughs> no, the first part is the fact that, of course, there was the farm, the farmers event that I was talking about. So I thought to myself, you know what would be very cool if if this game were to ever, for some reason, be made, which I would come to believe would never be made. If this game was ever to be made, the first thing you would do is a literal randomized branch of events where you can miss out certain events and not learn certain uh, farming techniques, but you can also meet like unique events that other people may not meet, may not see in a sense. Like here's an example. That's you kind of normal. Yeah, it's kind of normal. No, That's... here's an example. They're, 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 I literally wrote 16 random events that could technically link to each and every single one of each other. It's still very normal. I think no, I it's not normal for Harvest Moon. It's not normal for games like Harvest Moon and Rune Factory. It is not. Okay. So say something like this. First, of course, you could either go to the warehouse where all the stuff is stored. This is a total fan game. You must remember this because I have to, you know, talk about certain total characters. In the warehouse, you could find that there are a few mice that are stealing a jug of milk, which is which of course you could investigate. And after that, you can catch Nazarin, who actually who's actually stealing all this milk. And then you, of course, if you catch her, she tells you in exchange of in exchange for her being free, you not reporting her or anything. If you catch her, she tells you how to make cheese. So in the future, you can learn how to make cheese. Because maybe if you ne- but if you never see this event and you continue playing the game, you will not learn how to make cheese until quite a bit later into the game. Or okay. maybe another ex- or maybe another example. Uh, let me try <laughs> let me try to remember examples. Maybe another example. You can talk, you can meet Remu. Remu's maybe Remu just gives you some stuff to talk about. If you follow her, you can see other events. Or if you listen to her, sometimes she can she will complain about someone at the gateway of the human village who doesn't want to go away. If you investigate it, if you want to, I mean, if you investigate it, you will find it's Mystia trying to get in because she wants to find people who can maybe, you know, farm lampreys and stuff. Farm if you what? talk to her, lampreys. Have lampreys? You, have you, do, you, do you know that she owns a grilled lamprey stand? What's that? Uh, in canon. Mystia owns a, a stand, you know, not not not, not like Jojo, Jojo stand. stand. No, yeah, he has a Jojo oh, stand. Oh, oh yeah. No, no stop it. <laughs> no. It's Unzan number two. No, it's a dark Unzan. <laughs> dark Unzan. Okay, anyway, go on. You know those, you know, those kinds of like, uh, shit, what was it? Those carts in a sense. You know, the carts where people cook food and shit. She owns a stand that cooks a kind of eel. Maybe, I think it's not Rumia? an eel actually. Rumia? No, Mistia. Oh, you're saying a Mistia. I keep hearing Rumia. I said Mistia. Okay, Ru- Rumia Mistia. And Mistia I know. Actually, do okay, sound Mistia. Familiar, yes. Mistia, I know. Mistia, he oh, has a. Yes, she, she has, has a stand. A stand that, that just that sells cooks. food to people. Yes. And but, because she she has a stand mm-hmm. because she doesn't want people to eat bird, and so yes. she sells meat <laughs> from other animal instead. No, she. Uh, no, that. I thought she only she sells lampreys the most. Lampreys like a type of eel. In a sense, I, I thought she sells chicken. No, she no, doesn't no, no, sell no, no, chicken. Not chicken. Not chicken. Okay, I forgot. I I just know I just know that she has a stand that sells other kind of meat. Other yeah. meat that isn't bird. Mm, yeah. She just she's well, just back, sick of people yeah. eating bird meat. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is true. Because she's so a bird. Back, back to what I'm, yeah. So back to what I was saying. You can talk to her, and she will tell you how to farm lampreys. However, if you do not see this event, you will not learn how to, you know, have lampreys and shit. Or uh, let me okay. do you want another ex do you want another example? No, no, no. I think uh, you're okay. I get the gist of it. Get the I say it. it's not very it's a very common game concept. A uh, very common gameplay, you know. That's very right? interesting. I'm not really no, what? Mm-hmm. It's it's very it's quite common. It sounds like it sounds like an RPG. You know, uh, it sounds like an RPG that has a lot of choice, 
and what, technically and, is something of an RPG. And the, yes. and the decisions you make will impact the world, things like that. It's not the kind of yeah. gameplay, but from what you described from these two examples, I'm saying you are making your game is going to be a uh, farming RPGs sort, and your decision will something like that. The world. Something like that, because no, because in this in this game, there I was thinking. I wonder. I was being a, far too ambitious with my ideas here because I was playing around with uh, like many different events with other characters. Because in the Harvest Moon games, there is somewhat of a f- friendship thing you have to have with other characters. If say maybe your friendship level with a certain character is very high, certain events will occur where you may you may learn certain new th- new stuff or you may just get like you know friendship events and stuff, which you know is a pretty nice. It are just pretty cute little events with the the characters that you thought you wanted to be friends with, something like that. So I so I became very ambitious with the idea because when I first played Harvest Moon and stuff, I thought there was little to no incentive to be friends with uh, most of the characters because in my head nothing happens. They gave you nothing. Some characters do give you new stuff, like maybe a fishing rod for fishing. But most of the characters gave nothing at all. So I started playing around with the idea of how to incentivize people to be friends with all the other characters. And I created this system, which I would believe is not a unique system at all. I would believe a lot of other RP games, RPG kinds of games with these kinds of systems do have. It's basically this. It's all about uh, if you get your friendship level to the max with a certain character, you get on what I call the their good side. If you are on a character's good side, they will give you benefits. Sometimes it's passive benefits or sometimes it's special items. Sometimes they give you gifts every day if you talk to them or something like that. Or sometimes they even introduce you to new characters that you cannot meet any other way. Okay. So, so that was that was the basic gist of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it's very normal. Yeah, I very, can very see normal. a game made out of it, and yeah, if you, if actually a game is made out of it, I say there will be people who will play it. It it's, yeah, it's like a fine fine game. I mean, it sounds it sounds like a fine game. Whether or not it is a fun game, who knows? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, most of the stuff here is just RP. The farming stuff is technically similar to Harvest Moon, other than a few things that I added in based on Toho stuff. You know, Toho has stuff like curses and misfortune, negative, all that negativity stuff, right? Yeah. I thought to myself, you know what would be cool? If we have a system where your farm, your farmland accumulates curses and misfortunes, at a certain level, if you, if your farm collects that much curses or misfortune, maybe something happens to your crops. Maybe your crops don't grow as fast or aren't of high quality. So maybe we could have a system where you can talk with the gods and they will either bless your land or take away the curses and misfortunes. Like we like we could have the characters... I mean, we could talk to Hina. You know who Hina is, right? Yeah. Hina... And she will, and the, she will take away the curses and misfortunes from your land. However, of course, you have to pay a fee every time that happens. And there are many ways to try and uh, decrease curse and misfortune buildup and stuff like that, which I thought would have been would have been a pretty interesting idea. The problem, of course, is the fact that because of the fact that the buildup is very passive, it could become very annoying, and it might as well be a very small nuisance. It's not something that's going to hurt the farm unless you are so poor you cannot get Hina to help you. Something like that. Hmm. What other ideas? What other ideas did I have? Wow. How long will you do this? Have a... How I long will you do your... you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't... How long will you do your you, game you know I get, proposal? You know I get fucking... How long will your game proposal continue? Continue? You know, how long will it go uh, on your game proposal? I don't know. The other thing I could like, I would like to talk about, although I would kind of believe you wouldn't be interested, is the idea of 
marriage, marriage candidates, bachelorettes. In the Harvest game? Moon and yes, yeah, in I Harvest heard Moon about it. Roof, yeah. So in Harvest I used Moon to Roof Factory, you can marry certain characters, and I thought it would be very funny if you could marry the character Toho characters as well. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> That would be really cool. Be and all you say, okay, you can date a Toho character, and then you can marry them. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. However, yeah, I don't, even, I don't think there is any dating involved. You just get their romance level up to a high level, to the highest level, actually. And then you give them, I don't know, a fucking blue feather. That was in the original Harvest Moon. Give them a blue feather, you know, and then they'll marry you. Jordan, I have to say. Yes. At this point, it sounds ambitious. The game. It sounds. It's already fucking ambitious. I just stay. Just make it a RP, RP cheaper. And I and trust me, I say they. If you actually make it for like a RP, I say there will be people who are interested in playing it. I don't know, man. I could. I the think... problem now comes down to whether or not I could continue the RP to a point where I have to. For, to the point where you can actually finish the fucking game. Because I have been, in a sense, I have been uh, disappointed by the fact that so many good RPs die. Just die off. The, the guy playing the, the guy, the parser, the game master just either disappears or nobody plays the game. Even though the game by itself is fucking amazing. Okay. So I really don't want to start this RP without knowing that I can actually one day finish it. Which is a bit hard because RPs can take a long fucking time to finish. Yeah, I see. You see. <laughs> okay. She sees. She so, sees. Okay, I want to end this. Yes. I want to end this part by saying some some other things that happens to me. Do we have a sponsorship for once? No. Oh my god. Oh, okay. No. no. Sorry. It just suddenly. <laughs> I think I have too much free time, and as a result. I become a content creator of three things at once. What the fuck? Yeah, Tw content the creator. The podcast, the review, and what else? Okay, no. okay the, this, the first one is podcast. It's podcast. The second one is I, um, I, reinstated my, I restarted my blog for the third time. I, the third time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, my blog is on hiatus. Not hiatus. I give out my blog twice. And, and I then you came back to it twice. What? Three times. And then you came back to it again and again. Yeah, this is the third time I came back to my blog again. Uh -huh. okay. Third time. And I. Yeah, it happens because. Well, you, you, last, last time you asked me to send. Last time you asked. We say that I will post my new 3x3, three three, right? Like the mm -hmm. last episode. Yeah. And that's oh, yeah, when too. I have the idea of. Well, if I want to let people see my 2x3, three three, I, I can show it through my blog. And then at the same time, I say, hey, let's start my blog again for a third time. And this time, I want it to last as long as possible, just like this podcast. OK. That's yeah, pretty so, ambitious. I want to see how far you can go. So I am now having a blog now. And the third content creator is, content creating is, uh, well, I don't know how to say this. It's just weird. You draw hentai? No. no what? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically okay. Yes. So don't be do you know about? Do you know about the just? Do you know who is Joseph Anderson? Joseph Anderson? Yeah. Are you fucking kidding? Me? Yes, I know who Joseph Anderson is. Yeah, and he has a Discord server. You and you that? are in this Discord server. Yes. I'm kind of, yeah, a lot of people do have Discord servers now, and you are in it. Okay. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's free. You can join it actually. You what can join it and lurk. Okay. Right. <laughs> anyway, that that's off topic. Anyway, Joseph Anderson, he has his Discord server has an anime channel for the okay. to contain the anime <laughs> degenerates. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm interested. Okay, interesting. then, but they, but they have their own. Well, the this anime degenerate they have their own servers, which are separate oh. a separate Joseph mm -hmm. Anderson server that is for the anime degenerate. It just called an official. Uh -huh. Well, no, it actually start originally started as a server to organize group watch, but it oh, just okay. becomes. 
an anime blogs for the regulars in the anime channel of the Joseph Ooh, Discord okay. server. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm it just one there's one time that I say I forgot what I say something about damn it something about mm-hmm. Yuri. <gasps> I just I think I say that if I remember correctly I say I'm interested in doing a Yuri blog but I'm not confident I can show I can show interesting content because in that server in that server it just they're like a six to seven channel mm-hmm. that I just call anime blocks and each chain, each of the channel is for one regulars of the anime channel. Oh, wow, is, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, for the it's, it's, well, so each of the space? channel is yeah. owned by a member of the anime channel, regular member of the anime channel in Joseph Discord. And oh, each wow. of them, they cover different things. Mm-hmm. It depends on them. Like some, mm-hmm. like some guy, and one guy, he just covers, he mainly covers uh, Monogatari light novels. He just posts the screenshots mm-hmm. of the Monogatari light novels, the paragraph, and then he says something about it. And there's one guy, he, mm-hmm. he did reviews for anime he watched. And there's one that he just posts the uh, screenshot of K-On. Like, as he watched the okay. K-On shows, he just posts the screenshot of them. Yeah, it's just every, everybody mm-hmm. do different stuff with their own blog. And it just, oh, and I just say that I feel I want to ask that I want to do, I want to have a blog that is about Yuri. But I mm. am not confident I can make it interesting or keep it in long terms or care about it. Even though I say that, I still get a blog from myself. And I have a blog and I have to, not have to, I just, yeah, I blog, regularly do blog it. Blog about Yuri. Yes, I blog about Yuri. What a anime degenerate you are. Well, you are also an anime degenerate. You read a lot of manga. Oh, fuck you. You're a manga degenerate, actually. Yeah, but you're a lot better than an anime degenerate. Well, I just, anime. so far, only co- I've only covered two Yuri anime. And uh, the, okay. uh, all the other else are Yuri manga. I I even I occasionally mm. call over Yuri dojings. Yeah. Mm, nice Yuri dojing. Nah, uh, hash dojings. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, if you oh okay oh okay yeah. if you know who is Joseph Anderson, then yes. you should join his Discord. We can meet. What the there. shit happens in his Discord anyway? Well, his his Discord is is large because it's free and public. It's really really large. I heard that. I heard from the mod they say that there are people who doesn't watch his videos, but they are still in the server for some reason. That's what <laughs> I heard. Okay. Yeah, it's very big and it's very big. There is there's the video game channel where people just talk about games, and they have the serious. A serious channel where they just talk about something serious or uh, serious topics. Uh, they talk about music, uh, food, books, movies, anime. Oh wow! But the games usually are the main spot, and each and since it's so big, and each channels will have their own regulars like anime channels, and then it becomes so kind of dedicated that it has its own unofficial server, and then people. The regulars there, they have their own blocks in that unofficial servers. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Okay. Sadly, I don't think I'm really interested, if only because of the fact that I just lurk. I'm a lurker. Ooh. Or start, or just start Thank talking you. to people. You know, you can talk to people. Uh, I don't know. Uh, talking about games. Factorial. Hey, would you like to pick my Toho RP? No, 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 I just, no, 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 let's say that. I was saying that, uh, talk to people about games you play. I'm sure there oh, are people sure. who actually play it and they will talk about it and then go into a debate that lasts for hours. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> that, 
yeah, people the Discord people on Discord just they debate very frequently. Yeah. yeah. Uh that's all I wanna yeah. say. that's all I say. Uh that's all I should have said as well. Yeah. I got nothing else, man. Yeah. So I, now well, that we have come to the end of No this way, podcast, no way. You haven't well, you haven't well, given well, me an answer. Okay. Well, give Which me is? an answer. Uh, are you interested in joining the Discord? No. No. Okay, fine. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, we can end. Okay. I might as well check it out. Can you even check out Discord servers without going into them? Yeah, you can join it. Okay, you can. I think leave. you can. Yeah, I can join it and and stay there for a few days and see what happens and then leave. Huh. I think you can do that. Yeah, I guess I'm. Okay, I guess, I guess that can work. I could check around. Yeah. So, are yeah, we done with today? Say. Yes. No, I have nothing else to say, my good sir. Nope. Nope. So, there it, there it is. The end of another episode of the best podcast in the world. No. Symposium. No, oh, it's in the universe. The best podcast oh, in the universe. Oh, oh, in the universe. <laughs> the best podcast ever. The best co- podcast there will ever be. No other podcast will be better than this fucking show. The genuineness, the quality of everything. Nothing will ever come close to this. Thank you, motherfuckers, for watching. I hope we will see you some fucking time next week. Because for some reason, we did not record this on a Saturday. Yeah, see because you. the yeah. Saturday is, yeah, oh, is, okay, just, yes. is the exact day that I will have to watch. If the, the, the fucking people groups. discord. No, just now so I say that I have to why. wake up at fucking 6 a.m. in the morning. So, so that's fucking why. Yeah, that's why. That's why I did not tell I didn't ask you to <laughs> to start doing the record. Ah, uh, okay, so that's why. In any case, thank you guys. Uh we hope to see you next week. Yeah, so thank long. you, the audience. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mwah, mwah. See you next I'll week. See you next time.